came in to be here, okay? I'm just here to bring to you the words that are coming to pass this week. And this is actually for like the last several days. We're going to have new words in just a couple of days that are already coming to pass. But uh, the words that are coming to pass this week, Second Thessalonians 2 and 1, is the gathering of souls to Christ begins. I don't know if you've ever read Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. Hang on. This is that new Bible, and it's very uh, stuck together. Let me see if, okay. It's a miracle I found it that quick. All right, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Okay? That word is coming to pass right now. Okay. Uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So we're making our way to Jesus and we're gathering ourselves together unto him because the coming of of the Lord is near at hand okay but he also says in verse 3 2, but two and 3 do not be soon shaken in mind and do not be troubled in your spirit do not be troubled by any words that you'll hear nor by any letters. That means letters are like the living epistle. That's people that instead of giving the word, they give a word from their self, from their soul. And even by, if somebody wrote you a letter, which we don't write letters anymore, do we? <laughs> do not be troubled in any of these things as if the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, he says, for that day shall not come <clears throat> until there come a great falling away first. And the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. When he's revealed, after the son of perdition is revealed, then... You can start counting the days that Christ is going to be coming. But Christ will not return until the sign of perdition is revealed. Okay? And the sign of perdition, he opposes himself and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he is God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember... Don't you remember that when I was with you, I taught you these things. And now you know what is withholding that he might be revealed in his time. What is withholding? We know that Jesus Christ and the Spirit, the Word and the Spirit, they are giving time for the apostasy of sin to be made full. Okay? So until... Uh, the apostasy of sin except the coming away so that I mean that falling away until the falling away is fully manifested okay the word Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost they are withholding they are withholding um, the man of sin being revealed yet the man of sin is not revealed yet but he's near <clears throat> to be revealed. The man of sin is near to be revealed. As soon as the man of sin is revealed, then everything's going to get uh, really sped up really quickly. He says, For the mystery of inequity doeth already work. Only he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. Well, who is letting? 
Well, the Holy Spirit and the living word, Jesus Christ, God, he, God, it says, he told, uh, uh, only he who now lets will let. Who is he? He is God. God, it is Jesus. It is Jesus, the living word, and the spirit, God himself, who is now let. He is letting the mystery of inequity work right now. And after he allows this mystery of inequity to work, the Holy Spirit is allowing all this. The Holy Spirit is going to remove himself from the situation. The Holy Spirit is going to remove himself until he be taken out of the way. He's in the way right now. The Holy Spirit and the Word is in the way in every man's heart on this planet right now he's not letting satan just enter into them right now he's not letting satan just make get make them take the mark of the beast right now he's not letting satan just enter into them and just cause them a reprobated mind and taking their soul to hell no jesus christ and the holy spirit is operating all through the earth he's allowing the apostasy of sin to be magnified and to rise up he's allowing the mystery of inequity to become full but at the same time he's withholding the the spirit of the lord is withholding that devil from just taking everybody over and so the lord is allowing it and and then the lord is going to be removed out of the way he's going to step back jesus is not going to always drive them in he's going to step away from them for those who would not receive him during the appointed time that he allowed for them to receive. During that time, uh, he gave them a chance, and they wouldn't receive him. So the Holy Spirit is going to be offended. He's going to leave them. He's going to leave all those that would not receive Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is going to leave all those that would not receive him, and he's not going to walk with them anymore, prodding them, saying, come to me, drawing them with cords of love. He's not going to do it anymore. He's got to be taken out of the way. He's got to leave. And he's got to, the Word and the Spirit are going to be removed. And when the Word and the Spirit are removed, then that wicked shall be revealed. And not only is it going to be a man that just sits on a temple over in Israel, like what people, like the preachers talk, that wicked that shall be revealed is going to be a whole body of unbelievers, a whole group. Uh, like I told y'all, with a hive mentality. They're going to have a hive mentality. Uh, Satan is their God. And that wicked will be revealed. And it's going to be a whole group of apost uh, apostasy people. Um, and, and the Lord is going to consume all these with the spirit of his mouth. The spirit of his word. And destroy with the brightness of his coming. So the Lord said... That what is coming to pass right now is the apostasy of sin. Is uh, the Lord is allowing it? He's a he. The Jesus Christ and the and the Holy Ghost is He that is now letting, and He's letting uh, the devil have his way in the earth, testing and trying all these men, and then soon the time limit's gonna be cut out. And then the Lord is going to remove himself and his spirit away from all those that wouldn't receive him. And then that wicked is going to be revealed. And that's what we're waiting on to happen right now. And it is happening in small number all over, like in every city and every town right now. Um, Jesus Christ is starting to withdraw himself away from people that wouldn't receive him. And so it's already starting to happen. And many people are being revealed that they are the wicked, you know. And um, they're doing crazy stuff like killing each other and all kind of stuff. And they wouldn't receive the Lord. So, but he said, that don't be soon shaken for the day of the Lord cannot come until there come a great falling away and that, wick and that wicked be revealed. So all the wicked have been revealed yet. We're on the way. It's near near at hand. 
Okay, so that word has uh, come to pass. And then also he said 2 Thessalonians 2.13 is coming to pass. He said you are a cho you were chosen from the beginning to enter salvation. You were chosen to salvation. And Jesus Christ is salvation. So you were jo chosen to Jesus. You were chosen to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. So you got to be sanctified. So we don't just receive salvation. We're, we receive, we're chosen to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. So we got to go through a spiritual detox, a spiritual cleanse. That's the reason I said you got to come out of Babylon spiritually. That's another word that's come to pass. Revelation 18. Come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon. So you will not receive of her plagues. And he says that you got to come out spiritually. One day we're going to have to come out literally. But right now he's wanting you to come out spiritually. He said you were chosen from the beginning to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and the belief and belief of the truth. He said, and here's the truth, for the truth is the word. And he says, and I am the truth, and I am the word. In verse 14, where unto you are called, you are called into this, to this spiritual sanctification, and unto this truth, that Jesus is the truth. You are called into this. You are also called to obtain the glory of God, the glory of Christ Jesus. And in Revelation 22, 17, Jesus is the glory, it says. He's the light of the glory. It says that uh, the Word is the light, and Jesus is the light, and Jesus is the light of the glory. Revelation 21, 23. <laughs> oh, the bride and the spirit say, come, and let him who is thirsty come. This word is going to come to pass. This active going on right now. Isaiah 60, 16 is actively come to pass. You will suck the milk of nations and the breast of kings. That means that he's going to send you around to different ministries and to different churches. And uh, many are, and, and they're going to, that milk is what God has taught them. It's the sincere milk of the word. He said, and you will recognize that I am the Lord. I am your Savior, your Redeemer, your Mighty One. He said that Matthew twenty four fifteen has begun. The abomination of desolations has started. And he said that this is not where the man sits on a throne over in Israel. He said the beginning of the abomination of desolations is where he comes and sits inside of men's hearts. Saying he is God and they think he's God and he sits on the temple of their hearts and he defiles them. And then they become that wicked. They are carried off into the apostasy of sin. Then they end up with a reprobated mind. Jesus and the Spirit leave them and they are left with they are called that wicked and that is the abomination of desolations and the Lord said that's just the very beginning of it and the, the desolator he's going to spread himself like a dark cloud a black vine all over the whole earth and the abomination of desolation is going forth desolations untold he's going to go out to deceive all he can in the earth that's the reason we've got to run and grow and, and not grow weary we got to walk and not faint and we got to come to the feet of jesus every day we cannot let the desolator take the daily sacrifice out of our heart jesus christ is our daily sacrifice and we got to get in our daily sacrifice every day we got to get in our time with the lord we've got to get in our part with the lord we got to get ours you hear what i'm saying we got to get ours with the lord because he's our husbandry, and we're his bride, 
And we're married to him spiritually. He's our spiritual husband, and we're married to him. And we got to get in our time with the Lord, and we got to be intimate with him. We got to go not just now into the bridal chamber waiting on him wearing our wedding dress we got to enter into that marriage chamber we got to be intimate with the lord yes we've been wearing a wedding gown we've been in that bridal chamber for years being fitted with our wedding gown but the lord is calling you to come up out of that bridal chamber he says come out of that bridal chamber and get over here into my in the marriage chamber he said i've been sitting over here in the marriage chamber waiting on you to come through the little door into the marriage chamber to be intimate with me I am your spouse. Come. And he's calling us. Can you believe that? He is calling you to come into the bridal chamber. Now, I'm telling you, that's prophetic. He just gave me this. I'm hearing this. It's just a fresh uh, download. I've never heard him say this. I've known that there's a bridal chamber, I mean, a marriage chamber, but I didn't know why. Okay, I knew that the, it, up in heaven, so I went into the, the castle in heaven. I don't know if I was in my body or if I wasn't in my body, but I know that I was very heavy when I was up there, and I could barely lift my legs up. And my angel, A.L., uh, she said, I, I, my name is A.L., I will be uh, your servant. I will serve you. And she helped me over to my high-posted bed in the bridal chamber, and she put my help me get in the bed and then she was bringing me food and feeding me and she was talking to me about that but in the in the castle of, uh, in heaven in the third heaven where god's castle is um there's the bridal chamber and then there's uh the groom's chamber over here but in the middle there's the marriage chamber and so jesus is in the groom's chamber getting ready to come to get us and uh but he's making our places in heaven right now but he's still getting ready and because he's our groom and in in the right the marriage chamber right now is set up with us to sit and in, in there and talk with him and um to be intimate with him and i'm not talking in a dirty way uh like the person getting in a bed now i'm not talking about that it, it's it's like how we go and we are intimate with our god is is he's our god we're intimate with him but I went in the bridal chamber, and he helped me into that big old high post of bed, and I laid there, or she, I mean, she did, my angel did, and she said, up here you only have to sleep for 30 minutes at a time, so anytime I'm walking in the spirit, I uh, don't have to sleep. I may sleep for 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there, and another thing too, you don't hardly eat. You, you, you just don't have an appetite anymore for the food of earth. Your appetite is the food, the word of the Lord, so... Um, I don't know how I got to that, Lord. <laughs> um, but that word has come to pass, even though I don't know where it is in the Bible. I'm, I'm sure there's something in the Bible about uh, the wise virgins. They're waiting. They're sleeping, waiting. They were all ten virgins were asleep, and they were waiting. And then the sound was given, and they awoke. They trimmed their wick. They went out to meet the bridegroom. All right, then there's other things in the Old Testament about the bride. Uh, she would have to wait while the groom, he would stay gone. When he would come back, they would enter into that marriage chamber it was a tent back then they would enter into that for seven days they had to stay in that tent oh my god this is so prophetic the bride and the groom back in the old days in the old testament you can go go look up some stories on the bride and the groom and what they did let's just say look up the story of jacob when he married leah what did he do he ended up having to fulfill her week. Laban told him, he said, fulfill her week and I will give to you Rachel also. I mean, uh, Leah and is it Rachel? Yeah, I will give to you Rachel also. Fill, fulfill Leah's week and I will give to you Rachel also. And Jacob went into the bridal chamber, I mean into the marriage chamber the bride and groom chamber he went into the marriage chamber and he stayed in that marriage chamber with leah for seven days and they were intimate for seven days they never left that bridal that uh marriage chamber and that is the way it's going to be in the days of the great and dreadful day of the lord the wedding is ready 
and we are going to enter in to the marriage chamber because I know for a fact I already went into the bridal chamber February the 20th of 2020 at 2.20 in the afternoon. I went, uh, the Lord had sent an angel to my house uh, 12 months before that, and he, he told me, he said, you have 15 months. And, and then he left, he gave me a scroll, and he left, and I said, Lord, what is this 15 months? And he sent me to the book of Esther. He said, you got to get yourself ready because then you're going to be meeting, having one night with the king. And so I ended up ascending and going into heaven and going in through the uh, the bridal chamber. But right next to where that is, where I went in 2020, is the marriage chamber. And that is the, the next step. After you go and you are the bride of Christ and you trim your wick and you get the seven spirits of the Lord and you're dressed and you have all the clothes that you're supposed to have. We have to have on royal apparel. We have to have, not only do we have our wedding dress, but I believe you have to have your suit of armor also because I keep seeing that. Yeah, we have to put on our suit of armor every day. If you've not been doing that, you really need to do that. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17 has also come to pass. And also the story about the wise brides, that story's coming to pass. He has not, um, he's already opened the door to the bridal chamber has already been opened, but the the marriage chamber has not been opened yet, but it is soon to be open, and when that's open, we gotta be ready to enter into that marriage chamber. Okay, that's when we're gonna be with the Lord for seven days, okay? That could be seven years, so we gotta be ready. All right, um, Isaiah 60, 16 has come to pass. Oh, I've already said that one. Matthew uh, 24 and 15, that abominator desolations is going forth. Matthew 24, 23, he said also this one, um, to believe not all the spirits, believe not all those that preach Christ, for they're going to be preaching all different kind of Christ. And um, he said that during this time we're to flee up got to God's mountain. Jesus is that mountain. So we're going to be fleeing to Jesus. Going up, up, up the mountain of God. Um, he said in Matthew uh, 24, uh, verse 23 and 24, that, they, that if it were not so, these false Christ that had come out, that if it were not so, they would even deceive the very elect. They're going to be doing wonders and signs and miracles. What does that sound like? That Don't that sound like churches like you see to where there's people, they're preaching and they're maybe prophesying and people are coming up and they're maybe they're casting out demons or they're doing and they're preaching this Jesus, but we don't know if what they're preaching is right. We The only way we know is that we have to be the very elect of God and we have to be led by the Holy Spirit will lead us, and we will not follow a hireling's voice. We will only follow the voice of the shepherd. And he said that we got to be very careful during this time because they're, they're going to be doing signs, wonders, and miracles. And he said, but they're going to be able to deceive even the very elect. So y'all are going to have to be careful because there's going to be demons. I mean, there's going to be witches and warlocks and sorcerers and wizards and soothsayers even in the churches. And uh, they're going to be able to walk in miracles. And I don't know how they're going to be able to walk in miracles, but they're going to be able to. And this scripture is already coming to pass. Um, I don't understand it all. I'm just the messenger, so don't shoot the messenger. I'm just giving you the word. All right. He said to pray that your flight be not in the winter. And he said that's after the harvest. So we got a six-year harvest that's uh, coming very soon if it, and it should start as soon as the fall holy days are fulfilled uh, the the six uh, there's going to be a seven year stretch and it's going to be a famine going on famine in the word and when there's a famine of the word there's also going to be famine but um that that seven year stretch i know that he showed me that there would be a six year cycle for a harvest and a harvest of souls for the six years but on that seventh year 
not at the very end of the sixth year, beginning of the seventh year, that he's going to shorten the days for the very elect. And um, many people are going to ascend, going to be ascending, but many are going to be ascending and descending. Um, he wanted me to tell about the ascension experience that he showed it to me and how it would happen, how we'd be caught up. And, but he just wants you to know that everybody's ascension experience will be a little different, but that uh, he wants you to live an ascended life. How about that? An ascended life. He don't want you to be tethered to the ground, and he don't want the proverb that's coming to pass that says, Woe, woe, woe to those inhabitants of the earth. No. You might be like an inhabitor of the earth, but guess what? You're not tethered to the ground. You're spiritually lifted because you're in spiritual heavenly places in Christ. Why do you think the scripture says we are seated with Christ in heavenly realms and heavenly places? It's because he has a special covering over us. He has an angel barrier over us. He has a countenance and a glory. His presence is with us, in us, and over us. So we're not tethered to the ground. We're not walking through the dust of the earth like the regular people. We are a little bit higher because our spirit is lifted up with God. And so we are lighter on our feet. And we have a countenance and a glory on us that we can't see these things. And we might not even be able to discern, but the Lord has us lifted up. Okay? So he says, Play, pray that your flight be not in the winter or on the Sabbath day. He said the Sabbath day is going to be that seventh day. It's going to be like that last year on the earth. That is going to be the Sabbath of the Lord because it's the last it was that last week, that last seven years, but it's going to be the very last year of the last seven years. It's going to be called a holy Sabbath unto the Lord. He's going to take up the very late, and then he's going to pour his wrath, his wrath out of fire and brimstone. is going to come down. He's going to burn up the wicked and burn up the earth. And I'm telling you right now, I believe everything is starting after these fall holy days. The only way it won't start is if we pray and pray fervently that the Lord will put all this away and that he would give us more time. You Maybe you start praying he'll give us another hundred years that your children's children's children can bring in the harvest. But I just don't believe it's so. From everything he's told me, everything he showed me, and all the, the time travel that I, he has me to do, all the time I go in the Spirit... Every time he catches me up, every time he sends a scroll, every time an angel comes, all those things, we can't just discount all that. We can't just discount it and say, oh, that's just a dream, or oh, that's just a no. It's real. And God is not going to be mocked. And if he, and two, if he says it, he can't lie. God is not like us, or like not like mankind. He cannot just say something and lie if he showed it if he said it by god he's gonna do it so that's the reason i know that it, the days are fulfilled the days are upon us so what he's wanting y'all to do is get yourself ready so you can go in to the bridal chamber but then also you're probably already in the bridal chamber he's wanting you to get ready to get into the marriage chamber we got to be able to get in there one way or the other. You get in there through intimacy with God. And and he just be careful. He wants y'all to start looking at everything. Well, you don't have to judge by your eyes or by the hearing of your ears, but just pay attention for those that come out that are his messengers. Pay attention to things that you will see. Um, he's going to start revealing things. He's going to give you discernment. And I'm starting to get feeling so drunk. All right, these are some more scriptures I'm going to give. Y'all can look these up. 
He said these are coming to pass right now and these are going to continue to come to pass as things are fulfilled. Uh, all these words that I've been given, these scriptures, they're going to continually, it's going to con be a continuation until Jesus returns. So just because I say the words coming to pass don't mean it's totally fulfilled and it's not going to happen anymore. No, it's come to pass. That means it's activated and it's ongoing. And he said it's going to be ongoing till he returns. He said Micah chapter 4 and he said Isaiah chapter 60 where the mountain of the Lord is open. But he said Micah chapter 4 verse 1 and he said all the way through 5 verse 5. So that's a, a whole um, chapter and um, he said that the seven thunders are fist to come out. The seven thunders are fist to come out. And he said, go and read Micah 5.5. 5. It says there will be seven shepherds and eight principal men or eight principal ministers depending on which Bible you read and he said the seven shepherds are the seven thunders and the eight principal men are the seven thunders and John the divine is their leader he makes the eight and he said the seven shepherds and the eight principal men is fissing to be fulfilled he said the seven thunders is fissing to start their thundering and where there's thunder and there's going to be lightning. The lightning strikes of the Lord. And the light and the glory and the countenance of the Lord is going to be upon them. And their day star is going to be arising in their heart. And they're going to be bright shiners for the Lord. And they're going to be walking in signs, wonders, and miracles. But they're going to be the true seed. They're going to be true God's seed. And while they are walking, doing the supernatural works of the Lord, for it's all the works of great God Jehovah, there's going to be another group that's going to rise that are going to be the wicked and they are going to be doing signs and wonders and so we're going to have to be careful that you and you'll be able to feel the difference you'll be able to just not feel it discern the difference when you're around the wicked and they're doing their weird signs wonders and miracles your spirit will turn in on you like that like you it'll feel bad but when you are in the presence of of those that are the real deal and they are ministering or doing the signs wonders and miracles for the father through Jesus's name the spirit will elevate you'll be elevated you'll be able to discern the difference so um, he said Revelation chapter 10 is being activated that is the seven principal shepherds like Micah uh, Five, five, and it's John the baptizer. So Revelation chapter 10, the whole chapter, Revelation cha chapter 10 is starting. Isaiah chapter 2 is uh, starting the whole chapter of Isaiah chapter 2. Also, Isaiah chapter 60 is, is um, happening. Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. All those, there's many, many words in all of those 10 chapters that are already coming to pass. Uh, Psalms 121, 1 and 2. And he said Genesis 8 and uh, 4. He said, and in the seventh month, on the seventh day, on the seventeenth day, the ark rested on Mount Ararat. He had me write that down. He said it's going to be the landing place of the ark. Well, golly, what does that sound like? The Lord is telling me that he's supposed to put us in the ark of his covenant. He's supposed to put us in the hiding place, in the ark, for there's supposed to be great things that are going to happen on this earth. And he says Genesis chapter 8 verse 4 is, uh, is coming to pass in our day right here on these next few months that it's supposed to start. And he said that that was Genesis 8 4 is when uh, Noah was had been in the ark for a while. And it came to rest, and it rested on the seventh month, 
the 17th day, the ark rested on Mount Ararat. Now, I didn't look up what Mount Ararat means, but it's the landing place. And uh, so, we're going to land someplace. Are we either going to be landing uh, with the wicked, or we're going to be landing with the unclean, or we're going to be landing with the righteous, or we're going to be landing with the holy? For the scripture has certainly come to pass. Let he that be uh, righteous be righteous still. Let him that be holy be holy still. Let him that be unclean be unclean still. And let him that be wicked, let him be wicked still. This is definitely come to pass. That word has come to pass, the Lord says. But he said, for the righteous and the holy, y'all have already been in an ark. He's already had y'all in a protective ark. And he said, go back and read Revelation 12, the Revelation 12 sign for the lady. The first time the lady fleed into the wilderness, but God protected her. But the second time the lady's going to fly and she's going to have the wings of a great eagle and the two wings of the eagle are the two witnesses and the two witnesses is the spirit and the word and that is going to be her wings and that's how she's going to be able to fly to a place of safety and so she's been uh, she's got she's got a six years I'm telling you right now, the lady has six years that she has to go through because she flees and she flies. And we get to do both of them. We get to flee and then we get to fly because it is a six, it's a, actually it's a seven year it's a seven year because it's three and a half years of her fleeing and then it's three and a half years of her flying. And the Lord is telling me that many of us are getting our wings this year and we're going to be flying in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And then some of y'all that don't get your wings this year, you don't get the, the, the seven spirits of the Lord, which is the spirit of the Lord, and you don't have enough of the word in you, so you can't get the two witnesses because you wasn't ready. Uh, you'll have to go another year, and he may be able, you know, he may still give it to you, but he's already sent me some papers, and he's already showed it, and um, he's already got it set up uh, uh, for, for me, so I know if he's getting it for me, he's getting it for many of y'all. This is not just something he's going to do for me. He's doing this for all those who have pressed and pressed and pressed for they knew what they were waiting on they knew that we had to gather the harvest in for those that were just going to fly away that had been planning on just leaving and not helping him with the harvest and they just were, were wait, going to waiting for him to come and get him and for them to fly away you know that's between you and him i don't know anything about that he has not talked to me about me just flying away and not doing anything he is talking to me about being here to bring in his harvest and so that is what he has sent me to preach the truth according to his word when our work is done then we shall fly away and that is what he is telling me that we will not fly away uh, to stay with him for in our forever home with him until we are done with our destiny with our work but there will be some that fly away because they uh they die and then he takes them home to be with the lord or some will be caught up to go with him like enoch and some will be translated some will go to and fro to and fro like many of us are already doing that now but he said that these words are coming to pass and so he said the ark is going to rest in its resting place so he's going to have us put in a place of uh, safety um daniel 2 35 and i think it's daniel 4245. I'm not certain about that. It might have been 445 or 545. I can't remember. But Daniel. And then um, I gave y'all Isaiah 60. It's the prophecy of the Savior. And he said they're going to be coming to their Jesus moment. He said this has begun. And he said, the flow of togetherness is supposed to start. He said, and all those that are in the body of Christ, the true believers, that we're going to be united as one. For those that were not the true believers, they're going to be bundled in bundles and they're going to be put out of the church. They're not going to be in the body of Christ. 
He said, but we're going to flow together with together, togetherness. And we're going to have a fearful heart before him. And our heart's going to be enlarged for the Lord. And, and our heart's going to be enlarged too because of the sea of people. The sea of the people, the souls that are going to be coming to get saved. Our heart's going to be enlarged. It's going to swell because there's going to be so many souls and our heart's going to go out for them. We're going to have a big heart for the souls of men for them to be saved. doesn't matter what they've done. Jesus died for the whole world. Don't even care what anybody's done. They could be the most vilest murderer. Just like in a, a doctor that's done 60,000 abortions. I mean, maybe not one doctor, but a group of doctors. We can't not leave them to the Lord, no matter what they've done. We don't want that one soul should perish, not one. So if you have a heart in you that is not for men's souls to be saved, that is not the heart of the Lord. But if you have a heart in you that you care for the souls of men and you don't want anyone to go to hell then you have a heart for the Lord and he'll be able to use you in his end time harvest. But for some reason, if you really don't know and you don't really have that desire, you don't want to do a soul harvest or you really don't care about it, you need to pray that the Lord will take you and show you to hell. Show you hell. Pray that he'll show it to you because if you can see hell and see what they're going through, when you come back from looking at that, you're going to have a change of heart. You're going to want to save everybody you can, including your family, your friends. You're not going to be ashamed to tell your mother about Jesus, even if she says, I don't want to hear that. You're making me feel weird every time you talk about Jesus. I'm Say, let me tell you something. There's people in hell right now suffering. I saw them with my own eyes, and I don't want you to go to hell. I want you, and, and you, you are allowed to bind their strong man. When you talk to your family members, don't let them demons run over you. When you talk to your unsaved family members, before you even call them, before you even talk to them, bind their strong man's hands and feet. Bind those devils that work in their life. Bind them in that three-stranded court of Ecclesiastes that Jesus Christ loosed on Satan. Do you know Satan left him after he loosed the third scripture? Satan left. He did. Because it's a three strand, it is three scriptures, the three strands. It makes a cord and it binds them and they can't get out of it. And you can lose four scriptures and five scriptures. The more you lose, the more tighter it winds on them. They cannot outrun the word of God. The word is eternal and you can bind up any spirit, any demon power, any devil, even the, the soothsayers, the necromancers, the witches, the wizards, the warlocks, you can bind them with the word of God too. And always remember, they don't have peace. And you can actually say that to them. And it takes their strength away because they do not have God's peace. And our peace is our strength. And without peace, they have no strength. And so right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that we have the strength of the Lord like Samson and Samson had the seven locks in his head it said that he had seven locks of hair seven each one of these was a lock one two and then I got like three or four up here all these are locks and those locks the Lord told me are the and not, I'm not talking about my hair but in on Samson he had the seven locks uh, on his hair but it was the seven spirits of the Lord and he was uh, commanded he was a Nazarene and Nazarenes are not allowed to cut their hair and they're not allowed to drink uh, alcohol and um, so Samson he did both he drank alcohol and he got his hair cut and the seven spirits of the Lord left him because he had the Nazarene vow you know, so we got to be careful. Some of us may be priests unto the Lord, and we may have a Nazarene vow. And um, we have to be careful what we do. And the Lord also says John 14, 23 is coming to pass. And then he had a little story he wanted to tell. I'm sorry this video is so long. Um... I'm going to read this little story really quick, and then I'll be done with this, okay? It says, um, a word from our King Jesus, Yeshua. He says, live and keep the word. He said, if you will keep the word, it will keep you. And he said, a story of 
contempt and trouble. And he said, this is a story of a man and a woman. And the man had worked that day. They had awoke early that morning and prayed and spent time with me. And they had both worked for a 12-hour work day. And night had fell and they spent no time that evening praying. But somehow the cares of life and the cares of their works had one of them to veer off. As they went to bed, the man wanted to hold his wife. He did not care to be intimate with her, but rather just to hold her in his arms, and he also wanted to be held. He was very tired, and he was exhausted, actually, and she being an overthinker and continued praying and such, and she was on her phone, and she even transferred. She was doing banking. And she had her mind on her works and her ministry. And this would seem fine normally. Except the man had waited and waited and waited for her to finish. And she was laying in bed working after these long hours. And she kept working and praying. And she actually did this for three nights in a row. And he never said anything to her till finally he turned and he said, well, I see you care nothing for me. You know, you can feel if somebody's needing your love and you can feel if there's contention in a room and you can feel if somebody's drawing you with cords of love and the man had been drawing her with cords of love. He wasn't condemning her those three days. He'd been patiently waiting and drawing her with cords of love. I forgot to write that, but that's what the Lord told me. And she actually could feel that her husband was drawing her in that way. She was ignoring him. But then finally the man, he said, I see you care nothing for me. And you do not care anything for our covenant of marriage. But mostly you do not care for Jesus, he said. And she became offended. And she started justifying herself. And she justified her works all the prayers she had prayed, her diligence. After all, she did the majority of the praying in the house, and she did the majority of serving God the most, and she presumed in her heart these things. And finally, he told her, he said, you need to repent and, and stop your foolishness at bedtime each night. And he told her, that she was in the wrong and that she was actually a hypocrite against God's word. So she kept justifying herself. So he decided to get up and he removed himself from the situation. He said, go ahead, have your drawn out long and drawn out prayers that you do. Have your banking and your monies that you're trying to, um, dealing in have your phone have your ministry have your works have your cares alive but i'm taking the word with me and the man got up and he left out of the room and she did not even repent she she thought she thought she was justified she even told him go remove yourself for I am the one doing all the work for God. For God requires me to work always. My job will never be done. I will never stop serving Jesus, she said. Then one thing, now one thing I forgot to tell you is the man, he was the breadwinner of this marriage. He provided the housing and paid all the bills. And he was a very good provider. And the lady was obstinate. She would barely take care of him. She acted like she would put on airs or put on a fuss when it came time for her to just wash his clothes or cook his meals. So she did not treat him right in that way either. But so he was a good provider and he was a man who just wanted to be loved. 
And with love, the Lord said he would have been an easy going and their trouble would have never began. But this had been going on for a very long time. So long of a time that he ended up falling cold. And as he left, she justified again one last time her diligence in well-doing for the Lord and even said that he had no patience, which that's not true. He did have patience. He'd been waiting actually for years is what the Lord had told me in months. And uh, the lady didn't ever do right by him in some which way, the way the Lord was telling it to me. So they decided that they would take a separation. And the Lord showed during the sep it was a long separation. And it, he didn't tell me how long their separation was, but I can understand how this feels. But they had a long separation. And the Lord showed the lady how she had been in error during the marriage and had not kept her marriage vows, nor kept the word of God, who is Jesus. If she had just had kept the word of God, none of these things would have happened. And so then Jesus took her back through her life since she had been married to this man and when the marriage started falling apart uh, shortly thereafter and the Lord gave her every scripture that she had failed to keep as a married wife and and then he told her he said if you had just have kept the this very last scripture if you would have just worked yet while it was day you would, could have avoided this entire incident where your spouse was leaving if you would have just yet worked while it's day, he said, because I command you in my word to work yet while it is yet day, for the night come when the man cannot work. So she really wasn't even supposed to work while it is yet night like that. So her laying up like that every night, doing that way, was not God's will. So her husband was actually right on that. She needed to put that phone up and she needed to repent. And he just wanted to hold her. That was all he was wanting. And she would not do it. Um, he said, if you had just put others before yourself from the beginning, he would have felt loved. She said, he said, Jesus told her. He said, but you did not put him before yourself. You did not. You think you did, but you did not. If you would have included your husband uh, in your praying and not just doing all the praying by yourself and justifying yourself saying you do all the praying you should have made a way for the husband to sit and pray with you he would have done it if you would have led him in the right way God says and he said because unity is my father's way not these divisions that you caused he told her she caused the division that she did not wait on her husband to pray that she would just pray and then say that she did all the praying but she really didn't try to tell him let's sit and pray like she didn't teach the man the right way to go and you say well the woman's not supposed to teach the man well in this case the lord says that she was supposed to be merciful this way because she was more longer christian than the man was she had more experience if and then jesus said if she would have just obeyed her husband and repented that night of not keeping God's word, none of the separation would have ever happened if she would have poured her love and affection on the spouse as Jesus had poured his affections on her. If she would have just held him from time to time as he required men need, uh, the Lord said this is, most men do need affection he made them that way. He made them to, they're like little boys sometimes. They have to be held. Um, I don't understand what he's saying, but I kind of understand what he's saying. I'm just telling you what he told me. And um, he, he said if she would have just held him in the night, if she would have held him, humbled herself and held him, that 
she would have broke the cycle of this loneliness, this separation, and his heart waxing cold. It is a cycle of Satan, God said. It is a uh, cycle. It is a uh, ritual. It's like a satanic ritual that has started up. Um, it is against God's word. It's broke the word. Um, I don't understand all that, but I guess when you're not unified, you're breaking God's word. And he said, God lit, left a door for everything that each one of us do for us to be able to enter in to Jesus and do his word. That God always leaves the door open for us to enter in to Christ and to do his word in every situation, every thought, every action, even laying down and getting up. Everything we do, even preparing our meals, all the works that we do, the Lord leaves a door for us to enter into Christ and to do it according to, as His Word. So we're supposed to weigh everything by the Word and do the Word. But Satan tries to enter into our door in every single situation and justify. He will come in and then he justifies himself. And then we justify ourselves. I feel the glory of God coming on my head. And then God gave Genesis chapter 4, 6 and 7. He said, if you do what is good, will you not be accepted? But if you do not what is good, sin lays at your door. And when you open up, he will come in to you. I guess he'll come in and sup with you. <laughs> I can't remember the word word for word but jesus christ is that door and tomorrow i'm going to do a story about the door but that was the little story the lord wanted me to give you so let me pray for y'all and i'll let you go lord i gave him everything that you told me to give him on the words that were coming to pass the lord says make sure you come out of babylon spiritually now he said don't tarry around you got about a month before the fall holy days come and the portals are going to open there's going to be three portals that open in over your house and um he's let me tell y'all this there's going to be three portals there's going to be the garden gate there's going to be the portal in the middle it's all consuming fire uh and then there's going to be a portal on the left and i don't know that's something to do maybe with the brazen altar and the uh the horns of the altar and something to do with the, the inner working of god's corpse but i don't know which portal y'all get to uh, be able to ascend through but he's wanting to break after y'all go under that shepherd's rod this fall after and i think it's around october the 17th the day of atonement i think it is it's the last day of the fall feast days he's going to take the shepherd's rod and he's going to do like that over you and if you passed everything this year and you grew he's going to catapult you to a higher level and he's going to move you up and not only is he going to move you up but he will move those up that are with you and if you are married you really need to change things and get your spouse sitting and praying with you every day and I, the lord this is the way the lord showed it to me he showed me a table and a man sitting over here and a woman sitting over here and they're sitting across from each other and every single day they sit there and they come together and they pray together in the lord and the holy spirit came in right there in between him and Jesus was right there in between him and the Holy Spirit and Jesus which are the two witnesses uh, those two wings of the woman the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus led the man and the woman on what they needed to pray for and I saw that the woman was a little higher in the spirit and she was actually judging spirits that had latched on in the spirit they were hooked like strings and she was uh, judging those spirits and clipping those strings and casting them spirits to the feet of Jesus and shutting those doors and her husband got free and he got free and he and and his love didn't wax cold anymore and his heart was healed and then they their their marriage was healed and they didn't have to be separated anymore and I saw that and I don't know why the Lord is showing me that but it is not just uh, for me or for the people that I know this is for everybody he's telling me for every single man and woman that are 
married on this planet. He wants y'all to sit together. And the way I saw people, they were sitting at a table. And the reason they were sitting at a table is because they were having to look at each other. He said, and don't close your eyes. You look at each other in the eyes. And he said, I'm going to have y'all to do deliverance on each other. And I'm going to have y'all to judge uh, righteous judgments with one another and I'm going to have y'all to pray certain things and I'm going to take y'all through and I'm going to uh, do everything to fix y'all's uh, marriage and to fix everything and then that's going to help and then that way the Lord is going to bless us when the fall holy days pass the Lord will be able to bless those so our ministry will be stronger because you can't keep going the way you've been going for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Some of y'all 20 years. You can't keep going around that mountain. Do you expect anything to change if you didn't do anything different? No, the Lord requires us to be in unison. Okay, so and for those of you that are single, be a holy eunuch unto the Lord. Don't seek to take a wife or a husband right now. If you're already engaged, it's different, okay? Start your marriage off strong. If you're already engaged to be married, start it off strong. Christ the head, the, the man second, the woman third. That's the way the order is. But if you are single, just press your way towards the Lord and do everything you can to stand with the Lord. If you are already married or divorced and you have children and uh, you're divorced and you're a single mom, uh, just know that you are the head and Christ is over you and to start proclamating things over your children and everything you can bring to God in that word and remind him on it, he will give it to you even if your child is deformed, retarded, sick, anything like that you could go to the lord and you could say that uh you said that by that you became a curse for us so we would not have to be cursed you also said that by your stripes we were healed i want my child healed and i want uh your word to come to pass in my life and I'm bringing this into your courts of heaven and I'm petitioning the great god jehovah in the courts to undo everything that satan did and my family that caused my fam my member or my family to be sick in their body i want this undone and i want my child healed I or i want my body healed and we got to go to god like that and we got to start claiming that word we can't just let things happen like we we don't have to settle for less is what i'm saying the lord said he's going to start doing signs wonders and miracles and he said if you can't believe for that he said when the fall after the fall holy days pass he said get yourself to a revival and he's and bring those that are sick and lamed and maimed and all that and 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 deformed he said and get yourself to a holy revival and he's going to pour out his signs wonders and miracles through his uh, mighty ministers of God this year and the great harvest of souls has begun and the great supernatural miracle working powers of God has begun and he said he will heal all those that are sick and heavy laden he will heal them and he can undo any curse and any sickness but you gotta seek the Lord for these things okay so he said he's getting ready to do all of it so Y'all receive it. Amen. I'll see you later. Love you. Bye.